Learning how to climb in League is tough. Even just picking up the basics can take a while. Then, once you have those down, it seems like there are hundreds of advanced things, ranging from little ward tricks to way more complicated things. But something that matters more than anything that happens in-game is champ select. Obviously, good gameplay is a big factor in which team wins, but going into a game with the better champs gives one team an inherent advantage. And that's why today, I'll be giving you our new updated tier list for patch 13.6 to help you out. This is a loose ranking of what picks are the strongest for carrying in solo queue right now. I'll also be highlighting a champ or two in each role, talking about what makes them good, and also what their hardest matchup is. That way, you know what to ban when you want to play it, and what to pick when you're against it. We'll be starting things out with our top lane tier list. The first pick we'll be highlighting up here is Malphite. Those buffs back on 13.4 have been doing him some good. Malphite is a really easy to play champ, so anytime he's strong, he's also super reliable, since you can't really mess up on him. He does a ton of damage early on in lane, which can lead to you easily snowballing against opponents since you'll be able to easily itemize tanky items against them specifically. Post lane, he's even more OP. His ult is one of the best engage tools in the game, so you can always be able to pull the trigger to either make a pick or start up a game-winning fight. But one champ that will stop you from ever feeling useful is Mord. Both early and late, it's impossible to play against him. His sustain and shielding allow him to come out on top of every trade, and eventually, he'll either bully you out of lane or straight up solo kill you. Side laning later on is equally as hard. And if you think trying to 5v5 is your way out, good luck. Malph is only good in 5v5s because of his potential to hit multi-man knockups for his team to follow up on. But Mord will just walk up and ult you. If you ult early to avoid the ult, it's probably going to end up being pretty suboptimal since the only targets in range are likely other frontliners. Alternatively, you get sucked into his round. In the time you're in there, the rest of your team will fight a 4v4, and by the time you get out, the fight is probably already decided. Engage ults, like Malph's, are typically best at the start of a fight, not 7 seconds into it. The other top laner we'll be talking about is Ilawi. She has a super oppressive lane phase. Early on, her trading is annoying, but as she gets more points in E, it becomes downright unbearable. Getting hit once can knock out half of an opponent's HP if Alawi is allowed to fully kill the soul, but contesting her to protect it usually makes things even worse. She's also one of those champs where, if the enemy jungler doesn't do something super early, she becomes basically impossible to gank. Post 6, her ult makes 1v2s a pretty easy feat. As the game drags on, she's super good at taking over things in the side lane. Once you have Sunderer and Holebreaker, you can easily fight 1v2s and 1v3s, and in the right situations, you can legitimately 1v5 the entire enemy team if they're careless. But as with Malphite, Mordekaiser is a champ that you do not want to deal with when playing Alawi. He's one of the few champs that can trade well against you in lane, especially post 6. Even if you land an E and then ult, he'll just react with his own ult, taking you away from all of your tentacles. Now, let's take a look at our jungle tier list. Here, the first champ we'll be talking about is Gragas. If you're looking for an AP carry to play in the jungle, but don't like the more passive playstyle of Fiddle or Evelyn, Gragas is probably your best bet. Early on, he's got pretty good skirmishing power and gank potential, and he snowballs really hard. He spikes super hard once you grab Night Harvester, and when you pair that with a big damage item like Shadow Flame, you'll be one-shotting enemy carries left and right. Oh, you'll also want to be sure to grab an early Dark Seal and upgrade that thing to Majai's if you start getting fed. When playing Gragas, the champ you'll want to ban is Udyr. He has a quicker clear than you, meaning he'll always have the first move. He'll either gank before you do, or worse, set up a counter gank that baits you into feeding double buffs. He's also able to 1v1 you pretty easily, so you're vulnerable to his invades and can't really contest scuttle crap. With him being the better early game skirmisher and having better objective control, you'll also pretty much always be down the first couple of dragons, putting the enemy team close to a win by Dragon Soul. The other jungler we'll be talking about is Diana. For a jungler that's considered a power farm champ, she has a pretty good early game. Her clear is super quick and healthy, leaving her with a lot of chances to gank and get herself an early lead. She's also not too bad in early game skirmishes, so you don't have to avoid 2v2s and 3v3s at Scuttlecrab like most other farming junglers. The Nasher's Tooth buff this patch is also going to be pretty great for her. It's the first item you buy on her, so you'll definitely feel that early game spike being a bit stronger, giving you even better power farming and teamfighting. The worst matchup for Diana is Gragas. The only way for Diana to engage fights is with her E, and since that's just a straight line dash, it's pretty easy for Gragas to react with an E of his own. When you try to ult, he'll mirror that too, throwing out his explosive cast to displace you and make you miss most of your damage in fights. Aside from kit versus kit interactions, he's also just a champ that spikes a lot faster than you. Remember, earlier I was saying Gragas comes online as soon as he has Night Harvester. Diana needs two or three items before she feels really good in teamfights. 
Next, we have our middling tier list. Here, the first pick we'll be highlighting is Aurelion Soul. Even after yet another round of nerfs, he's still going to be one of, if not the best scaling picks in the game for mid lane. Not too many champs can punish him early, and once he gets just a few levels, he starts erasing waves and stacking Stardust. He scales up pretty easily, and once you get to teamfighting later, he reliably does tons of damage. His Q has practically no cooldown, and even if foes dodge the main meteor on his ult, when it's empowered, you'll still nuke them with the shockwave. When playing Asol, the ban you pretty much have to go with is Zed. While I did say not many champs can punish his early game, Zed is one of the ones that definitely can. You just don't have the CC to stop him when he goes in, and post 6, that means he can kill you on cooldown. The only option you have against him is to play super safe under your tower, which means you'll bleed CS in lane phase and leave him open to roam and win the rest of the map. The other mid laner we think you guys should pick up is Zed. Aurelion Soul isn't the only champ that Zed does well against. In fact, he pretty much wrecks every one of the mages that are so popular in the current meta. Another of his strengths is his flexibility. There are three different rune pages that Zed can run. First Strike, Electrocute, and Conqueror pages and their corresponding builds are all very strong options that can help you deal with a variety of enemy team comps. But one champ that no amount of flexibility will save you from is Pantheon. He absolutely crushes Zed at every point in the game. His point and click W combo allow him to constantly force trades on you, while his E makes it so that you can't do anything back to him. If you respect his damage and just let him shove the wave in to avoid trading, he'll just react by roaming, with his ult making him especially good at ganking the sidelines. Let's move things down to the bot lane, starting with our carry tier list. Here, the pick we've got to talk about is Jinx. She's always been the scaling hyper carry. Her 2 item spike is strong, and her 3 item spike is absolutely crazy. And the buffs she got last patch have made it easier to start coming online a bit earlier, so you can reach that point in the game a lot faster. One champ that makes it really hard to carry as Jinx is Draven. Being a scaling pick means you generally want a relaxed, slower paced lane phase where you can focus more on farming. But Dravens will pretty much always want to be super aggressive constantly, forcing fights as early as level 1. He'll stomp you in early trades, and if you or your support give up a single kill and let him start snowballing, things get really hard. He does so much damage once ahead that there's a good chance you just get dove on repeat, and the game ends up being over before you really even get the chance to play. And finally, we have our support tier list. Down here, the support we've got to highlight is Rakan. Rakan has always sort of struggled in solo queue due to his weaker lane phase, but ever since those changes back on 13.3, that hasn't really been an issue. In fact, his lane phase isn't just okay now, it's pretty damn strong. And that's not exactly fair, considering just how powerful he is later on in the game. His ult and W give insanely reliable CC in teamfights, making him god tier for both engaging fights and peeling for carries. When playing Rakan, the ban you'll want to go with is Renata Glass. In lane, anytime you look to W in, a good Renata Q can displace you out of it, putting you in a spot where you lose the trade every time. At least you still have your team fighting to fall back on, right? Rakan's flashy, slippery way of darting around fights makes it hard for most champs to counter his engage. But for Renata, it couldn't be any easier. She doesn't have to be precise and use her Q anymore. The second you start ulting, she just throws her own ult in the direction of your team. If your team is moving in to follow up on your engage, they're hit by the gas and end up shredding each other. Even if your team takes the time to avoid her ult, you're still left in the middle of the enemy team, and with no one here to follow up and help you out, they just easily blow you up. And that wraps things up for our 13.6 tier list. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can stay up to date on what's going on in the meta. Until next time, good luck out there on the rift. Later!